Welcome back. Gary went off to fabricate the aluminum pipe frame to our new custom T-top. Over the last 25 years, he and I have collaborated on more T-top frames than I could even count. That is why I only have to give him a bit of my input, and then I get to sit back and witness his talents and his artistry. Especially now, having the equipment that bends pipe, unlike we were able to bend pipe 15 or 20 years ago. Gary fabricates each pipe using both old-school and new-school methods, not to mention a fair share of geometry and physics. By using both a hydraulic digital pipe bender and a pipe roller, he's able to fabricate the components with the shape and the bends that makes each one of the Matan T-tops custom in its own right and design. Designing and making each one of these components is only half the artistry. The other half is his tremendous ability to weld these parts into what most would consider a masterpiece. Not to mention, when he's welding, it sounds like an orchestra, where sometimes I walk by him and I swear to God, he's welding to a beat of a song. While Gary was doing his fabrication, Joey was going through the final fabrication steps to the molded fiberglass hardtop. Our fiberglass hardtops are sandwich constructed with two skins between seven pound foam core. There are two PVC chaser tubes that run down the center and two four inch by inch and a half thick pieces of Penske board that run the length of the top to mount the frame using our blind fasteners. The hard tops are oversized, enabling us to cut them down to desired sizes based on the boat and design. This leaves our edges rough. So after we're done cutting it down to size, we need to then plunge router to remove an inch and a half of material, enabling us to backfill. You can hear in this video the step-by-step -step process to achieve a perfect, long-lasting bullnose edge of the hardtop. They backfilled it yesterday after we routed it out. Joe is applying skim of piranha just to fill in a couple of our lows so we can then run our router bits around the edges. You need everything nice and smooth so our roller on our router rolls over a nice smooth edge and gives us a nice consistent round over. Joey completed this process as well as applying ultra high bill primer to the bodywork and then sent the hard top over to Scotty for final paint. We feel very neglected that we didn't share Scotty painting our dark green clear coat detail on. Joe and I have been in the office working. Scotty's been out here spraying. He's all done. Three coats of green, four coats of clear. Bamboozle Stein himself. With now only the hard top and the T top left to have this vessel fully assembled, Joe and I loaded up the boat to take it out for its first sea trial, as well as mark the water line for the application of the bottom system. Nice. Push button. I'm good. It doesn't even feel like you're going 23 miles per hour. That's pretty cool at whatever, 3,500 RPMs. She goes right on the key. The boat ran fantastic. With the 300 horsepower and way more torque than the original 350, we achieved 40 miles per hour and only 4,000 RPMs. We double checked the systems one last time, brought the boat back to the shop. Well, a lot of you saw how killer this paint job was. Right out of the booth, a night nice Scotty shot it. And we still go through. 
a wet sand and polishing process to make sure that we make it in its hand. My nephew Paul from PD Designs added a couple of small vinyl details to the console and the motor, adding to the final custom look of the vessel. I keep telling him that this one little graphic that he's doing is going to make the whole boat stand by. Moving the boat back into the assembly shop to install the T-top, JB was now ready for its return to the Clancy family and the Boston waters. So stay tuned as we take a cruise up those famous dirty waters. If you like this segment, click right here. If you like this segment and you want to watch the whole episode, click right here.